Welcome to the Title IX Podcast on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. Our entire network is fueled by Cody Road and Elisa. We are back in the Wild Rose Casino and Resort Studio. It's so good to be across the table from you again. So good. I almost started the podcast with the dance, dance the night Ooh. away. Because I've just been hearing that on repeat with all the March Madness. It's that I, now we can say March Madness. March Madness. That's right. It belongs to the women now, yeah. too. I love that the they chose dance. that song as their, it just felt right. Yeah. So if you watch the March Madness Selection Sunday for the women on ESPN, you saw or you heard that song over and over, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite songs. Yeah, it's fun. It's from Barbie, if you didn't know. <laughs> we watched Barbie. You watched a movie? Week. I only watched Ooh. the last half of it. What? Well, well, I feel like the last half provides information about the first half that I didn't need to sit through. Oh, you're so wrong. <laughs> You missed so much. No, I think I got the gist of it. I, I'm sure you got the gist of it, but it's a phenomenal <laughs> movie. You missed a lot of laughs. I'm sorry for you. That's okay. Go back and watch no, it. No, 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 no. Listen, we did not get there. Done that. Unfortunately for Elisa, she missed the first half of Barbie. <laughs> we are sponsored by the Ivy College of Business at Iowa State, who I'm sure would also recommend that you go back and watch the first half of Barbie. Okay. There's a lot of business. What's the word I'm looking for? shenanigans <laughs> lessons in there okay yeah anyways thanks to our friends at the ivy college of business for continuing to sponsor the podcast but elisa like you alluded to the madness is upon us it it's here it's the most wonderful time of the year it sure is sing it it's the most <laughs> wonderful you're going time. too fast you're going too fast <laughs> that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> Um, before we get into our breakdown of the madness, Elisa, we have an announcement for our listeners. We do. At first I was like, do we? <laughs> we yeah, do. We do. This is a bittersweet announcement. It is. It's about the future of Title IX. This is our second to last episode. So our next episode will be our last. I feel like we're going to get a lot of DMs. We are. Get your, uh. Get your phone charged up for everyone sliding to our DMs yeah. about this. And the next podcast is going to be a doozy. Mm -hmm. We talked about it earlier and we have no idea what we're going to do. Yeah. So we don't know how we're going to say farewell. Yeah. But, but we'll say it somehow. We've been doing this for what? Almost four years. Yeah. So we started Three in the fall least. of 2019. Yeah. And I was thinking about how much life has changed since then. You yeah. have changed careers. I've changed jobs. You had, had another baby. child. <laughs> We had a worldwide pandemic. Yeah. Um, and the truth is our kids are in a lot of things. Life circumstances have just changed. And for me, at least something had to give. And it just felt like it was time to say goodbye for now. Yeah. And yeah. when once Steph kind of started talking about it, I started, think, started thinking, you know, I'm not putting as much into this as I used to. Um, and that's a disservice to our listeners. Yeah. And our listeners have been phenomenal. And mm -hmm. I know that next week we will say thank you a lot of different ways and a lot of different times, but it's worth saying thank you now as yeah. well. And we're not going anywhere. Right. I mean, we'll find ways to fill this um, space. Maybe not a podcast, but Twitter. We will. Yeah. You know, we'll we'll be around everywhere. Kate Middleton is. I will also be. <laughs> I did not expect a Kate Middleton reference I from you. I didn't either. But I'm so proud of it's, you. Girl, it, I've been... Have you been down the rabbit I've holes? I've been hot and heavy down the Same. rabbit holes. Same. They're like 27 parts. Um, I don't know what their Instagram thing is, but I have covered every every inch of London. So the truth is, we're actually quitting and ending Title IX so that we can go on the hunt for Kate Middleton. <laughs> Detectives. <laughs> Yeah, so we just want to let you know so you at least had a little uh, lead time for, for our next final yeah. episode. But so you can there you go. buy up the tissues. That's right. And buy us farewell presents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Steph loves it when I look into the camera. I do love it. Before we started, Aiden was kind of down in the dumps and Elisa <laughs> asked if we could do anything to cheer him up. And she said, like, announce that we're quitting. <laughs> And he didn't laugh, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Does that mean he's sad? Does that mean he's happy? And he's still not talking, so I guess we'll never know. I'm a man of mystery. <laughs> That's for darn sure. Mm. That's for darn sure. He's in his mysterious era. 
he and Kate I like that you're using the word. Aaron. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm. I've. I found out it was a Taylor Swift thing, right? Yeah, you're right. So I'm. I'm like. I'm gonna try and it. use it. Okay. Well, we're glad. I'm in my era. Era. <laughs> you're in your era. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get to it. March Madness. Let's start with the Iowa State women. What do you think? Oh, I think seven seed take on ten yes. seed Maryland. Yes. In, at Stanford. Um. And in, I in Stanford, California. Yes. And I handicap the the NCAA tournament very similarly to the way that I handicap um horse racing which surprisingly just like everybody right surprisingly <laughs> as one does. I do um, <laughs> but I started looking at you know who they've beat uh why they beat them who scored the most in the in the games that they lost and I think the overall idea about Maryland is that they do not have a big yes. that can answer for Audi Crooks. Okay, yes. And I looked at the, this is funny, I did the exact same thing. Their top three scorers are guards. Yes. They don't really have a big presence, like, at all. No. And their forwards are 6'2 or smaller, yep. not not even true forwards, more guards. Yep. And they don't have what you would deem a center. Yeah. And they did have, a, like, a center um, in lavender, oh, lavender Briggs, but she got injured in yep. February to not play for the rest of the season. Um, Shane Sellers is going to be a handful. And the question I'm going to have is, can Audie keep up on the other side? It, we know she can dom She has the ability to dominate on offense. Can she keep up on defense? Because it's going to be hard for her to guard a guard. Essentially. That's an interesting point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. And they're going to run. She has shown, Audie has shown that sometimes she will take some breaks on defense, which is, that's a big thing. Yeah. You know, true centers often do, you know, take. <laughs> that needs to be a t-shirt. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. Uh, but it'll, it'll just depend on how she can guard if she stays out of foul trouble yep. as well. Um, we'll see. As Audie goes, I think this game will go. I think you're right. And you mentioned Cheyenne Sellers. She's their leading scorer, 15 and a half points a game. Um, and their two other guards are right in that mix mm -hmm. too. But you're right. There's just no one that's scoring as a true big yeah. on their offense. But I hadn't thought about it in the way that that might be a pitfall too. Yeah. And I, I was looking at the teams that they have lost to. Lost to Nebraska. Nebraska has a great center. Lost to Indiana twice. Indiana has great big in Mackenzie Holmes. 6-3 scored 23 in one of the games. Um, they, they're they just, they're inconsistent in their guarding of the bigs. And it'll just depend on how our bigs can perform. And they've not really beaten anyone. So they beat Ohio State most recently, which was a huge win in the yeah. quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament. But outside of that, they don't have a lot of signature wins. Yeah. They don't really have any signature yeah. wins. And I mean, we know the the tournament championships are pretty much like crazy. They're mad. You just never know what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, I say all that. <laughs> and then I say, but I just don't know yeah. because yeah. I, it's hard for me, and I'm sure you're the same way. I don't, I, I don't watch a lot of Big Ten outside of you know the the highlights of Caitlin Clark. Yeah. So I don't have a lot of information outside of what I see on the paper, just like you. The interesting storyline, which the committee would have us believe, uh, they don't look at, but I feel like <laughs> they have to, is that Brenda Freeze is the head coach of Maryland, and Brenda used to be. A, an assistant under Bill Fennelly. Mm -hmm. She also happens to be Stacy Freeze's sister. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, that's an interesting little wrinkle in there. Yeah. And I don't know that it means much other than it's just familiarity. Yeah. So we'll see. And then I was watching today that uh, Coach Fennelly lost his voice. <laughs> Again, <laughs> again, um, and kind of talked about, you know, some complications from having had throat surgery yes. or throat cancer, yep. which. You hate you hate to hear him bring that up, um, but curious to see how that affects his coaching. <laughs> it, his players are probably yeah. like, "Yes, yeah, no kidding." <laughs> um, but I mean, he has great assistant coaches. Mm -hmm. He has assistant coaches that could be head coaches that have stayed with him forever yes. and know his every habit. And yes. yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, so I don't think that's going to hurt much. No, but uh, I didn't realize that Brenda Freeze is so her accolades are. I didn't know. Like yeah. she has been with Maryland several for more than a decade. Has taken them to three Final Fours. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I just, I think I last know. year they went to the Elite Eight. They did. Yep. Yeah. 
So this is a down year, I would say for them, mm-hmm. but it's still a down year where they made me pause and I was like, oh yeah. Oh boy. They've been consi- inconsistent. <laughs> They've been inconsistent and dealt with injuries. And that sounds a lot. And they're getting hot towards the end of the season. Sound familiar? That sounds very fam- familiar. And I wanted to mention this just kind of taking a second to look back, which we'll do more after the season finally ends, but we're 20 and 11, 12 and six in the big 12. That's better than last year, a year where we expected to make a deep run in the tournament. Yeah. And we have this core of freshmen rough start in the middle there of conference play, but it does feel like we've kind of turned it back around. And the Texas championship game in the big 12 tournament wasn't much of a game, but Texas is a number one seed. So it's kind of like, all right, just, play the game, play that high level and see what happens. Well, and we kind of came out and got punched in the face. (laughs) You know what I mean? Punched in the mouth right away. There was really no coming back. And there wasn't any coming back, but it's not like they extended the lead as the game went on. And so I think there's something to learn from that. I agree. The bummer of it all is if we happen to get past Maryland, we're likely going to face number two seed Stanford. I want to see Audie against Cameron Brink, who is the Pac-12 player of the year, Pac-12 defensive player of the year for selfish reasons, just to see what would happen. Yeah. But she, like I said, Pac-12 player of the year, Pac-12, I mean, she's she's Cameron Brink. Right. So I mm, don't like that matchup for yeah. Iowa State. Yeah, it's a tough one. I will be honest and say I would don't think we get past Stanford, but crazier things have happened. Yeah, I feel like, however, and I... I know like we talked a little about a little bit about the men's team as well. I don't know why, but I would be no- more nervous if it seemed like an easy route. I think that's the Iowa State mentality. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I think historically when it's looked like an easy route, yeah. we've gone out early. Sure. Think bad things happen yeah. with frosted tips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you see Addie Brown's sister, Kennedy, Mm-mm. plays for Duke? Oh, no. And so they're a number seven seed as well. And they play Richmond in USC's bracket. So oh, they're wow. sisters, both number seven seeds in the tournament. And I was wondering how many sisters do you think there are? Oh, it'd right. be a fun little Current? stat. Yeah. Do you know? I don't. Oh. I, I didn't. I didn't take the time to okay. look, but <laughs> there can't be that many. Yeah. No. The Jones sisters. It yeah. didn't happen. Oklahoma is not in. Yeah. Either yeah. men or women. Yeah. Wait, Oklahoma women are, right? Are they? I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. Aiden, they have to be. I think they end up with like a four seed. Okay, yeah, that was the men that were. Yeah, sorry, I was just gloating about the men. I guess so. That's two sets of sisters. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be a couple more, but regardless, pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Um, the Iowa women get a tough draw as the number one seed in the Albany bracket. Yeah. So I looked. They're still the number second best odds to win the ta- national title, Iowa, but they have a potential LSU matchup along with K State, UCLA, Colorado. Ooh, that bracket so I know. Um, I I saw somebody use Chat GPT to see who the winner of the tournament would be, <laughs> and they have Iowa losing to LSU, and now in the final four, in the elite eight. elite eight. I was like, let me look at this bracket in my brain. Um. It, I just think it's funny. Like asking chat GPT is like asking a bunch of puppies to get on and like pick the winner. I wonder how they did that. Like, did they know. feed chat GPT a bunch of stats? I don't know. I just, I think chat GPT is so funny. It's funny. And it's also creepy as hell. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, that's a tough bracket and we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's going to create some madness and some fun storylines, but if I'm an Iowa fan, I'm not very happy with that yeah. one. Yeah. Um, did you watch the selection show play I out? Did. How fun were the reaction videos? <laughs> so good. A couple were very delayed and a couple I was like, are you doing this on like a Blackberry? <laughs> like, she's <laughs> Louise. Yeah. Delayed. There was one where they were like at a bar. I was like, I love this. Um, did you see Columbia? Yes. Okay, so the Columbia Lions, which <sighs> Yeah. I didn't know they were the Lions until <laughs> earlier this morning when I yeah. looked it up. First time in school history they play in the Ivy League. Um, the their reaction video is fantastic but if you pay attention there's this one guy i don't know if he's a coach or a manager he falls off of his chair and just like reaches into the sky yeah thank god (laughs) and it's just one of those like this is why we enjoy this so much it was really cool those were good ones they were really good um 
A couple other women's basketball notes. Attendance in the women's basketball conference tournaments was insane this year. The Big Ten had more than 100,000 um, total in attendance, so actually physically at the tournament. It was the first ever sellout. ACC, SEC had more than 60,000 apiece for the most, most ever attendance for both those conferences. And the Big 12 had more than 22,000, which was the most since 2013. So this is actually my winner for hey! the night. Yeah, women's basketball in general. The get-in cost for the final four for the women is higher than the men. Is it really? Almost $100 higher than the men. Now, keep in mind that the venue is smaller, much smaller. Sure. So demand is going to be higher. Sure. Uh, almost every women NCAA conference tournament set attendance records. Uh, Fox reported that their average viewer for a women's NCAA basketball game was 981,000. And for men's was 946,000. Hey. And then this goes a little away from NCAA, but uh, there's a bid for a 14th WNBA team, and that would be in Toronto. And we've been talking about how badly Canada, Canada, yeah. Canada, 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 Canada <laughs> how badly Canada wants a women's basketball yeah. team. And Bridget Carlton has been really vocal about that. Yeah. So that would be amazing. Yeah. So women's basketball was my winner. And did you week. see, I know, I know the Caitlin Clark effect, <laughs> but that was the most watched conference tournament game ever in history right almost three million view viewers on average and it peaked at four and a half million viewers in overhead right like, those are insane numbers and i get the caitlin clark effect but also she didn't play in all of the conference championship exactly games, right know? i mean I, and like, i only say that because i know people will come right. at me but the point it, you're exactly right. right like this is not caitlin clark is a part of this yet but she doesn't play in the big 12 the acc or the sec right yeah. right it's yeah across it's, the board like there are big names in women's basketball in a year where there are not big names in men's and yeah. last year there weren't big names in men's and I'm uh, what's the big name coming in there. There isn't, I mean, Bronny James, we thought was going to be a big name. And then, you know, he had his, his health issue and has not, is not the best player on their team. You know, it's tough. Yeah. They just don't have, they don't have the star appeal. And it's fun to see these networks capitalizing on it. I don't know if you saw today, ESPN plus launched uh, their, trailer for full court press. It's a docu-series that they're following Caitlin Clark, Cardoso for uh, South Carolina mm -hmm. and Kiki Rice for UCLA. And it's coming in May. And I just think it's going to be really fun to, w I can't think of another example where we get that kind of access yeah. in women's sports. Do you think women have more personality than men in general or yeah. in s y yes? Yeah. <laughs> Case closed. That's that's it. <laughs> I'm ex I'm so excited to watch it. I, I, I just like I think back to the arguments about NIL and I'm just like, you guys look silly now. Yeah. Because women can capitalize. Yep. Let me tell you, w when when somebody when attention is at stake, women can capitalize. It's yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, also, I just looked Oklahoma is a five seed. They play mm -hmm. Florida Gulf Coast. And um, yeah, so we have Aubrey and yeah. Um, yeah, that's another sister duo. Yeah, I forgot the Big 12 Coach of the Year. Quick question for you guys. Womp womp. What? Uh, since this was the first year that the women played before the men, instead of them being the like Big on 12. top of each other. Yeah. In the, uh, yeah, in the Big 12. How did you think that went? I thought the fan support was great. I shouldn't have been surprised that Iowa State fans would go down there for that week. Um, but I was concerned that people would choose the men particularly because of the youth of this women's basketball team this year. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Iowa state fans showed up. Yeah. I don't know. I need to go back to look at, well, but I feel like the fact that it's the most attended since 2013 suggests that it was a good thing. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's what the numbers I mean, say. It suggests that it was a good thing, but I don't think it's in a, in a bubble, you know, it's the sport as a, a whole. Yeah. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I guess, in if you're looking at the numbers, then it's a good thing. Yeah. And I think too, with that attendance number, you could look at it fell on the week of spring break. Sure. Yeah. And you played it. I mean, let's see, it was was it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Yes. Or Thursday. One of so those. It's, yeah. yeah it fell right. on the weekend. Right. So I mean that certainly helps too. Yeah, but. absolutely. Yeah. I think um it was one of the things we were really nervous about last year. And maybe we shouldn't have been. Yeah. Yeah. I think I wonder if there's an there's enough Iowa State fans to go around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we say, oh, will people go for both? 
maybe they don't need to go for both right. because there's enough Iowa State fans to go around. And there is a, we're lucky at Iowa State to have a subset of diehard women's yeah. basketball fans and, you know, that those people travel well. Yes. Um, do you have any more women's basketball notes? No, I don't. Okay. Um, I think we should talk about the opening weekend to the NWSL and the opening weekend of CPKC <laughs> Stadium. I do. I want to hear all about it. You were oh, there. I was there. It was amazing. Uh, I had it built up in my head. So this is the first, we've said it a gazillion times, the first purpose-built stadium for a women's professional sports team. I had this moment built up in my head so high and it lived up to every expectation I had. And the coolest part about it was that um, Patrick Mahomes and Brittany Mahomes are two of the four owners of the mm -hmm. team. Patrick's there. And there's all of these, there's four main lines to get into the stadium that had been building for a couple hours. Patrick shows up. No one gets out of their line to go see Patrick. They just stay. And it was this moment of there's arguably the biggest sports star of the world. And these people don't, they care, but they don't care enough to go see him. Yeah. Like he was not the star of that moment. The yeah. star of the moment was this historic moment. Yeah. And it was just perfect that way. How are your seats? They're great. I love it. Yeah. I, I looked at the stadium and I don't know that there is a bad seat. No, it's a very, it's interesting. From the, you drive into Kansas City, it's right on the river. Mm -hmm. It's right on the entrance to the city. Um, and it looks bigger than it feels inside. It feels very intimate inside. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be really cool for little kids to get in there and realize how close they are to the players, even way up high like I am. Yeah. So I just think it, It'll be, that's the, I mean, it was sold out. That's the busiest it'll be. Um, and there was no issue. It was just perfect. Yeah. So I, mm, just amazing. Love it. Yeah. But it was, that was kind of the the way the season started. And then you go into this opening weekend and you have all these sellouts and Angel City sells out their stadium, 22,000 people. You have a very high scoring weekend. You have the youngest player to ever score in uh, National Women's Soccer League history for the current 16 year old. Mm -hmm. Alex Pfeiffer. Then she did that little <laughs> knee thing. And I didn't I was mean like, to talk to you about this. Baby girl. I so, was like, those 16 year old knees were like, oh. So she slides, she runs and yeah. slides. And then she stands up and like looks down. Yeah. Like, do I have grass stains? <laughs> like, did I just break both my ACLs? <laughs> like, oh, it was just one of those weekends where it's like, you know, you have this growing momentum mm -hmm. and you capitalized yeah. and for a sport that is exploding worldwide, particularly the United States, I don't think they could have asked for a better opening weekend. Yeah. I also think, and this is, I think this is underrated that color of teal that they use oh my is not a color of teal that has been used really anywhere else. The only time I can think of it is the Liberty have those teal yeah. and that's about right. the only one. You're right. And they it look feels lighter. Too. Yeah. It feels lighter than that. It just feels modern. It does. It feels like when the Seahawks, like went neon green. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? That's what it feels like. And it feels a, like it new. pops. Yeah. And it looks so cool with that red. It's a, yeah. And their gear is, they've just got to figure it out yeah. in a really cool way. Yeah. But I saw a, an article in front office sports that I wanted to share with you. So they mentioned over the weekend of this opening weekend on the NWSL, none of the, the kits have white shorts. Mm, intentional. Yeah, I saw that. And this had to do this. There's a movement in tennis to start taking away the requirement for white because we get our periods. Yeah. Like, let's just say it. Like, we get our periods. Surprise. And I know it's wild. I, I it's so wild. I actually don't because I have an IUD that, <laughs> <laughs> that like stopped it. So, okay. But you get what I mean. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but this article is talking about how, yes, that's, that's why but also how the menstrual cycle is a bigger problem than aesthetics because a recent study found that female soccer players in particular, where we've seen a shit ton of ACL injuries, are significantly more at risk of injury in the weeks right before getting their period, in the week right before getting their period. Interesting. And more research is needed to study the effects of hormones on the muscles. Yeah. But this article from Front Office Sports noted that only 6% of sports science research is based on female athletes. Huh. Six yeah. percent. So I watched a thing recently that Lou Lou. What is the Lululemon? Lululemon. <laughs> Lululemon. They're pumping a lot of money into yes. studying like women and um sports for women and stuff like that. Yeah. I that's something that's top of mind for me. Cause I'm also very fascinated with um like exercising and even just like working 
based on your cycle and like how when you are able to like focus more and when you have more energy and stuff like that and moving things around in your schedule life, in right. your life yeah um to it's fascinating to me and so in this study res the research show that women have two to eight more times which i don't understand how that's a big gap but two to eight more times <laughs> more acl tears than men do the way they land from jumps their wider hips their thinner acl tissue and how changing hormones during their period impact their knees yeah. and i just like I knew that that number was very low in terms of what the gap is between men and women in studies. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to be 6%. Yeah. But also, it was the first time I thought about, how have we never studied this? Yeah. <laughs> but also, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I just thought it was incredibly Yeah, that kind of stuff is very fascinating. Yeah. And I'm sure that as women's sports continue to grow in popularity, those study well, at least I hope those that gap yeah. continues to lessen. And this is the type of thing that I studied when I went to Iowa State. Like my degree is in sport management and kinesiology. Like you should go and back and do I it. know career we, change. Yeah. And I just I look back at the studies that we did and I wonder. I don't know. I wonder what it could have looked like had we been studying more women. And the you know, what's weird is the ACL tears have really vamped up in the last I don't know, decade. Yeah. And that's happened as more females have continued to play. So like at some point you can't ignore it yeah. anymore. Yeah. At least you hope. Um, you mentioned the WNBA, the potential expansion team. I had two more shout outs for the WNBA. The 2024 draft, which is in Brooklyn, is open to fans this year. It's the first time it's been open to fans since 2016. The tickets sold out in 15 minutes. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's something I would never want to go to. Like, I, I don't have any interest in going to a draft. Yeah. So the fact that those things sold out in 15 minutes, and I'm a pretty big sports fan. Yeah. But I'm like, okay. All yeah. right. And then I don't know if you saw the Aces news, but um, so they're the reigning back-to-back -back WNBA champs, of course. They've announced that they've sold over 8,500 season tickets so far for this upcoming season. They're on pace to sell out their regular season, but that's 8,500 tickets right now is a new franchise record. And I saw a rumor that Ashley Jones is going to get a ring. I saw that too. Yeah. Good for her. Love that. I'd like to see that bad boy. I would too. Um, do you have more WNBA news? I don't. Okay. I'm going to stop talking for a second okay. if you have more to say. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm like looking through my stuff. I have a little bit to say about softball. Okay. I have one more professional mention. Great. Um, the PWHL, the Professional Women's Hockey League, I've, it's not, again, not my wheelhouse, but I keep seeing this continue to gain momentum. Coolest thing ever. Again, one of those things that never crossed my mind because it's never been a thing. Their jerseys, they have a sponsor that has agreed to put their sponsorship logo up top. Yes. And they're putting the players' names on the bottom so their hair doesn't cover their names. No, I know who this is. The Mol Molson Coors Beverage Company agreed to do it. There's Across the one. league. I I swear I saw this story before. Oh, well, another league, you mean? I don't know. Oh, well, either way. I love I mean, that, for it's one of those things that because we've never seen it, we don't yeah. think about it. And then you see it and you're like, why haven't we been doing that yeah. forever? Interesting. Just made me really proud. Yeah. So shout out to them, that sponsor. I love that. Okay, tell me about softball. Okay, so ISU softball. Uh, softball America ranked ISU outfielder Angelina, Angelina Allen. the Angelina fifth, Jolie. Angelina Jolie. The fifth best outfielder in America. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. And she was the Big 12 Player of the Week the first week in March. Um, would not be surprised if we see more of that. That's She's good. She's phenomenal. And again, they have those badass script jerseys that they wore yeah. again. Yeah. And they've they've started to play their home games. Uh, hopefully they get some warm ones. <sighs> this is so hard. I know. And um, so then a friend of the podcast, Sean Jankowski, messaged me the other day. Yes, asking this is about, so cool. Yeah. So the run rule they enacted last year, I think it came out in like February of 2023. Um, but so there's a run rule where if you are up by eight runs after five innings, the ump can call it. Okay. This was not the thing I thought you were going to oh, say. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go yeah. ahead. So, so the home team gets the chance, you know, if the visiting team is up, they get the chance. So the least you could play is four and a half Got it. innings. Um, but ISU had a walk off home run to win nine to one in the sixth. Okay. So that explain if you look through um, the scores on cyclones.com or something, um, you'll see that some of the games ended in the fifth or the sixth. And that's because of that eight run rule, like a mercy rule, sure. basically. 
what was enacted. And I think that's interesting too. I wonder what the studies said. There's no coming back from it, you know, <laughs> with that, with only You're a couple screwed. of innings left. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's, that gets, it gave, gets games going a little bit quicker in a time where we're playing a lot of like double headers yes. and stuff like that. The thing from Sean that I thought you were going to say, friend of the pod, Sean Jankowski, <laughs> we have a new national champion for Iowa state track and field. Oh yes. Sydney will, uh, will Willits is the new long jump champion. Yeah. She's the first ever to leap 22 feet. The first long jump champion in the, in Iowa state history. And were we expecting this? You know what? I don't know. Cause I think she's a so decathlete. Was I? No, <laughs> I, I was not. I, I think she is a decathlete. Okay. Decathlete. Decathlon. Decathlete. Decathlon. Yeah. But so I, I, I wasn't expecting that from her and I'm very excited about it. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I actually was sitting there thinking about how far 22 feet is. Yeah. Are you kidding me? John Walter said it's like taking off from the, like the top of the key. key. Yeah. I That's think. Insane. Or maybe the free throw line. Either way, that. I don't care. That's yeah. Michael Jordan esque. Yeah. I can't couldn't do it. I don't think I could get five. Yeah. Feet. Should we try? You Should we know, see if we can get girl. the length of the Remember that ACL thing? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where I'm at in my cycle. I can't risk it. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot risk an ACL tear at this time in my softball career. That's right. <laughs> Not in this time of your life. No. At this point in your softball career. <laughs> Yeah, my softball mom career would really take a hit <laughs> if I if I tore one of those bad boys. All right, do you have any other shout outs today? This is a short ish oh, pod. Oh man. Oh, our my loser of the day, you had your winner as women's oh, basketball. Yeah. My loser is the um number putting us as the last number 2 oh, seed in the men's yeah. tournament. Forget you guys. My loser and red flag bull. Ooh. Is a double dipper. Coach Tang saying that Lipsy was okay. the number one flopper. Lipsy's not even the number one flopper on our team. <laughs> <laughs> That's Gilbert. Coach and, Tang uh, is my right, red flag. Right. And I'm not even mad that he's that I love Gilbert and I love that he sells it. You yeah. know what I mean? He's always got the like head yeah. jerk going. When, he, when I heard he said Lipsy, I was like, you, you don't mean Lipsy, right? <laughs> I think he got him mixed up. I don't know. Lipsy does it too. Uh, not as much. The head thing. The, <laughs> the head. They all do it. They do it then. The NBA. It's I so mean, great. It's crazy. But Coach Tang, just go play in the NIT. Against Fran? Like, what are you? Like, keep, keep our name out your mouth. Forever. Is what I have to. What is did you deal see, with us? Did you see some brilliant human on Twitter <laughs> put together a one shining moment? It was for a Kansas, Kansas fan. Was it I, really? I don't usually like Kansas fans. If you've not seen it, find it. Yeah. It's fantastic. So good. It, like, what is his deal with us? I don't think it's just a, like, I think he's got to deal with it. Do everybody. you think it is? He, I don't know. He's my least favorite, right? It used to be no. self. Oh, how have we started liking self? I didn't say I liked self oh, to be because clear. he was he, because he stopped to watch the juicy okay, wiggle. That was pretty cool. Yeah, he got it. He got He's, a kick out of are that. Are we softening on him? No, no, of course not. No, of course not. <laughs> That's my red flag is drum tang. Yeah. Do you have a beige flag? Oh, I did. I don't. I don't remember what it was. Oh, Let's I see. have a beige flag. I just oh, thought the of NIT. <laughs> <laughs> Just that's it. <laughs> My beige flag is filling out multiple brackets. Like, good for you. Oh, yeah. I'm happy for you. Yeah. Some people get really riled you up know about what? that. I will put together the women's bracket challenge. Okay. People do that on ESPN. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, get on ESPN and look for it. We'll I'll tweet about it. Okay. I'll, we'll tweet about it from the um, Title Nine. The Title Nine. Soon to be gone. Soon to be forever forgotten. In the what if I'm going to change it to the artists formerly <laughs> really known was. as? Maybe we, we won't, get, won't get so many random tweets. Uh, all right. Well, if you have ideas for how to help us send mm -hmm. off the Title IX podcast, we let laugh, us know. We laugh to keep from crying. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes I do both at the same time. <laughs> Oh, it's been a ride, Elisa. Yeah. We'll get into all that later. <laughs> but for now, go Cyclones. Go State.